Don't listen to anybody's fucking dialogue but your own. Hey, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. I'm super excited to introduce you to my good friend David Goggins. If you've heard that name, you know it's synonymous with the guy that broke the world records for pull-ups, who's really about facing your fears, getting mentally, physically, and emotionally tougher, so you can not only battle the demons of the past, but you can look forward into the future and be absolutely dominant in your business and in your life. I can't wait to get your feedback on this show. Enjoy. Give them a little insight on what that meant for you to just go through all that, because those parts of the chapters also were insane. Right. Right, so, the detail. I'm the only person in the history of the military who has ever gone through Air Force um, um, Tactical Air Control Party training, um, Army Ranger School, where I was an Army man, um, in three hell weeks. Yeah. So only person to ever do that. But the reason why I did it was, when I was a young kid, I considered myself very weak, very weak. And as I started developing this indestructible mental toolbox. Yeah. Because yeah. what I realized was the things I was like most afraid of, I cowered from. Mm -hmm. I had to start facing these things and becoming an expert at the things I feared the most. Yeah. I was afraid of my own mind. My mind would get off on these crazy places of woe is me. Mm -hmm. my, my internal conversation wasn't great. Yeah. So I had to start mastering it. Once I started mastering it, and the horrible place I was at, I was literally, I considered myself the worst person ever alive. That was my conversation. But once I started mastering my own life, I started realizing, my God, man, this was in me? Yeah. I was a 300 pound fat guy. Now I'm 181 pounds, 190 pounds, whatever it was. I'm gonna go through all these hell weeks. Mm -hmm. So I started realizing the capabilities of the human soul and the human mind. Yeah. So I started to examine it more and more. So we have a theorist, we have a practitioner. Mm -hmm. The theorist is a person that's going to sit back and read books mm -hmm. from a library that someone else wrote. They become real smart about what someone else wrote, okay? A practitioner as a man is me. I put myself in hell, mm -hmm. lived in it for a long time, and figured out how the human mind works while being, while suffering, while in pain, yes. while yes. misery, yes. and that's how I wrote my book. Yeah. I'm going to tell you exactly what your mind is thinking. Most of us don't stay in hell long enough to write the book. Yeah. I stayed in long enough to write it and finish the book. Okay, so I just got to say, for you watching right now, I want you to think about what David just said. Like a lot of our clients right now, and this is actually one of the questions I want to ask you is, a lot of our clients are dealing with a changing market, a changing right. real estate environment, right? And there's people that are watching this that are entrepreneurs and salespeople and teenagers, but, but you know, their world is changing. Right. I remember the first time I met you, mm -hmm. you were saying, I had to look in the mirror and say, okay, not that smart, roger that, I can do something about it, right? right? Get educated, right? I'm not as physically strong as I wanna be. Okay, I can do something about that. Like, you have this mindset of like, weakness, go out and solve it. Go put yourself in that. Right. Could you just speak to the guys that are in the gals that are watching this right now that are, they're afraid to make phone calls. Right. Like, they make phone calls, someone says yes, they make $10,000. Right. You with me? And they, they are candy asses and afraid it. to do it. So I call it in my book here, it's called the accountability mirror, yep. but it's called raw accountability. Yeah. Not just accountability where we find that nice happy word. Yeah. If you're fat, and you look in the mirror and say, wow, I eat a little too much. No, you're fucking fat. My exoskeleton is larger than yours. Right, no. <laughs> that's the new one, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, you, <laughs> you cannot say that to yourself. No. But see, you have to make a list yeah. of the things that you don't like to do. This list should be very long. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't like making calls, yeah. yep. the very first thing you should do is start making a shit ton of fucking calls. Yep. Because why? Yep. That begins to own you. Yes. You start to drive yourself this way mm -hmm. versus this way. Yes. It, but you'll figure out, if you start making a whole bunch of fucking calls, if you like calling, call a lot. Yeah. Guess what happens? You get over it. You get over it. So what we do a lot is, I, I heard a lot of people say, triple down on this, triple down on most of your strength. No, 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 no. That works for a lot of things, but when you're afraid and you don't have the courage, mm -hmm. you have to triple down on your weaknesses yeah. and make that become where you start to guide yourself. Okay, I don't like calling. Today I'm making 100 calls. Yeah. I'm going to dial 100 times. Say that one more time. Everybody talks about triple down on your strengths. Right. right? Play to your strengths. There's right. a million books on that. Yes. And, and the way I heard it was like, 
like what you fear is right. going to own you more than the power of your strengths. So you got to attack. I mean, if I get it it's 100% the right way? true. So I, I have my book here, but what happens is when I was younger, life and society made this big world with all these endless fucking possibilities, yep. endless possibilities. My life made my possibilities this fucking big yep. because it made me afraid of all these different things. Yeah. So all this stuff trapped my mind, it shackled my brain, it made me a prisoner within my own self, saying, mm -hmm. this is all I can do. Because why? I'm afraid of this, I'm insecure over here, yeah. I got self-doubt over here, back behind me, good Lord, who knows what's behind me? I'm like, look behind me. So your life is this big, versus it being like, I can do all this shit out here if I start to break down these, ball, you know, these, these, these different walls and barriers. And that's what I started realizing. I could become a Navy SEAL. I could become this, but I was afraid of the water. Think about this. I know. Why the fuck are you going to go be a Navy SEAL when all you do is play in the water? Yeah. For and we don't play. We're in it and we're living in it. You're tired. The ocean. Off. You're swimming for That's miles. That's right. The ocean is unforgiving. Yep. Yeah. So my yeah, mind yeah. is, I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. Yeah. If I didn't face that fear, no one would ever know me. I was number three behind Michelle Obama for a long time until my book sold out. Yeah. And I was a guy just 21 years ago yep. who was 300 pounds, could barely read and write, mm -hmm. and now I have a book just two spots behind Michelle Obama. Yeah. Hopefully Guess why? We, hopefully we get it above today. Right. Just because I was afraid. Yeah. But you overcome those fears. Guess what happens? Mm -hmm. The whole world, you unlock this door and everything opens back up again. You you said, and I, I wanna say it was one of the first times we met, we were sitting backstage at the summit and you were yep. in the face of my son. Yes. Like, you were like, look man, when I was a Navy SEAL, like, you had to kick down doors and you knew there could be people on the other end of that door mm -hmm. with a gun or like, and if you weren't willing to do that, like, you're in the wrong game. That's right. Like that, that sort of metaphor for like, there's so many people that are just afraid of the other side of the door so they just look the other direction. Right. So I wanna, I actually wrote this down for you. I actually said, in my mind, one of the things that makes you just a genius, and I don't use that word lightly, right? right? I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of intelligence. You are a genius, in my opinion. You took what could have been the most tragic story mm -hmm. and reforged it into one of the most extraordinary identities. Like, right. what you believe about yourself, how you view yourself, and how you act. Mm -hmm. Somebody's watching this right now, David, and they identify themselves as a fat person, mm -hmm. as a lazy person mm -hmm. who doesn't follow through. Yep. What advice do you have for that person to reshape their identity? So that person was me. Everything you just mentioned was me. I mean, thousand dollars a month, 300 pounds, just, I can't do any of this stuff. Yeah. These people are better than me. Yeah. So the first thing is, that's the first big problem right there. Mm -hmm. First big problem is that you have put a lot of people above you. Yeah. Put no one above you. Yeah. No one, whatever, you, but if, if, if you believe in something. Say that again, say that again, because that's, you know. But you know, but the, the man, the people that make more money, the people that are better looking, the ones that are on social media, and they're so good at this. I put God above me, besides that, there's no one better than me. Got it. You have to become an equal. Yeah. So this is how I look at it. If you're playing, and I talked about it at your conference, if you're mm -hmm. playing Roger Federer, yeah. okay? Be, be, before you get on the court, with Roger Federer, he's the best of all time. Yeah. But you're also a professional tennis player, yep. man. Yep. You're forgetting your own fucking resume. Yep. So once you get on the court, let's say it's a grand slam. Mm -hmm. It's five sets, hopefully, yep. if you can go the distance with yep. this guy. Yep. But before you even bounce the ball to serve it, you're down two sets. Because why? You look across and you're playing fucking Roger Federer. Yeah. But guess what? You hit a good shot on Roger Federer in the third set. And you realize, I can play with this motherfucker, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's too late. Yeah. You gave up two sets before you got on the court. You got to stop giving up two fucking sets before the game begins. Yeah. And we do that already. We give up two sets before the game begins. So I learned that real quick. I saw these Navy SEALs before I became one. My God, they're better than me. Yeah. They're better than me. I gave up a hundred sets. And I had to work up to realize these are human beings. Yeah. With the same shit I have. Yeah, there's some people who run faster, swim better, but mentality's mentality. Yeah. There's no, I, you're not gonna outwork me, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna catch up somewhere. Yep. So that being said, I used all that 300 pound man, that fat guy, that dumb guy. And people say, why do you say dumb? 
You have to be real yep. with you your be fucking raw. self. You got to be wrong. If you're not smart, you're yep. fucking dumb, yep. but you can become smart. Yep. You can become smart. It's not a permanent tag. Yeah. You're dumb forever. Yeah. You're fat forever. Yep. No, be raw. Don't find the cushy word. So what I did with all this stuff is I realized, okay, here it is. This is what you are, David. But now check this out. And this is what's funny about this. This is not a lie. I don't bullshit. I used to bullshit all the time. I don't give a fuck who likes me. Mm -hmm. This book right here, I sat back when I was 300 pounds. So my strength was this. And you put the fat David. Oh yeah, right fat David's right cover, behind man, me. Which oh yeah, I totally he's right behind love. me. That that, yeah. that fat David's right behind me. So yeah. this was this was funny. I swear to God on this. I sat back and I was like, my God. I, I'm I'm able to visualize years beyond where I'm at right now. Uh -huh. How are you gonna feel if you can pull this off? When I got the the, the idea to become a Navy SEAL mm -hmm. at 300 pounds, hate the water, can't run down the fucking block, horrible. And I put everything on that. My whole life was I'm gonna be a Navy SEAL, come hell or high water. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. Uh, the hardest thing in the world I'm gonna put on that. But I hope everyone, everyone watching this, commits exactly. to something like you that. You gotta commit to it. You gotta commit. You gotta put everything on yourself. Yeah. Which is why I self-published. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I'm so glad it's number three behind Michelle Obama. Because yep. guess what? Everybody, there you go, I self-published. Every publishing company on the planet right now is it's very pissed. Very upset. <laughs> well, well oh, I yeah. turned down a $300,000 offer. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm better than that. Yeah. But anyway, back to the power of it all was you got to sit back and be able to imagine mm -hmm. where you want to be. And be. Like, that's the power. If I can pull this off, what kind of story have I just created? Yeah. And that's so, what I did. I created a story. I created a, a, a story. Yeah. What's the better story? Oh, I was always afraid to make phone calls. And I'm just using that. You no, know, it's as, true, though. I'm afraid to practice. I'm afraid to, you know, to go out and knock on doors, to try something new, right? It's that whole, you know, kind of, we've always talked fixed mindset, growth mindset, that's right. that stuff. But let me, let me go deep with you. Something. Let me say one thing yeah, real quick about, about the phone calls. It's funny you talk about that. I work with a guy who was in a business like this for yeah. five years. Yeah. I'm not going to mention his name. Yeah. He called me up five years ago and said, I want you to work with me. Yeah. His job, a big day for them mm -hmm. was if you had five meetings mm -hmm. and 40 calls, $40. Yeah. That was like, according to their big business plan, that was a day. Yeah. He said, I want to make more money. Um, all this shit's just bugging, you know, it's, just, it's bogging me down. I said, this is your fucking day? Five meetings and 40 fucking calls? Like, and, what do, you, do you start at 10 and yeah. then at 4? And, and, yeah. and, and this company you work for says that this is a great day? This yeah. is what we want? I had this guy, no shit. One day, mm -hmm. he made a thousand cold calls mm -hmm. and had seven fucking meetings. Yeah. So his new norm, which is now the company, like, how, how'd you become? He made a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. went to making six hundred thousand dollars in three years. Yeah. That's that's the jump he had, just because his mindset changed because the company put this shit, this label. This is mm -hmm. what is a good day. A good day is forty calls. Five fucking meetings. I said, that's a fucking bullshit day because you're comparing yourself with mediocre people. Bingo. Bingo. Do not run mm -hmm. with mediocre people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how to beat these mediocre people. Mm -hmm. This is your new 300 dials and eight fucking meetings. Yeah. And his whole world changed. Now, 300, just another day. Yeah. It's a Tuesday. So it's just, it's just the mindset change where don't look at something. Like, for instance, in Hell Week. Yeah. They said, when you get to Wednesday of Hell Week, you're broken. Mm -hmm. So everybody on Wednesday. But give them context. You're talking so, okay. 72 hours without sleep. You're talking sleep. about 130 I mean, hours of training. Yeah. It starts on Sunday, ends on Friday, and on Wednesday, you're almost done. You're halfway through. Yeah. So everybody on Wednesday, they hear this. Because everybody says Wednesday is like, man, you're so tired, you're done. Mm -hmm. So that becomes your new norm. Yeah. No. You're cruising into Wednesday, That's getting right. ready to feel tired when you don't even know why. Because someone told you you could feel tired. Bingo. So for me, I was like, hang on a second. I started studying my mind a whole bunch while growing up, mm -hmm. facing these things. Don't listen to anybody's fucking dialogue but your own. Yeah. They're tired. Yeah. They're not you. Yeah. So it's just all about, it's just, your mind has a tactical advantage over you at all times. It knows your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It knows your strengths. And it will guide you into your nice comfort zone. Yeah. We have to reprogram our mind to get a, like, like a different vantage point so that you know how to mm -hmm. be in charge of yourself. Yep. Versus your mind being in charge of you. Keeping it simple, keeping it real, my Sick. man. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate and guys, it. share this and uh, get that book. Get that book. Follow him at David Goggins on Instagram too. Totally bananas. Thank you. All right, guys, we're out.
Hey, it's Coach Tom Ferry. Have you been considering hiring a coach? If so, click the link below and check out what we do.